Hey there, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to embed running metrics from your Garmin into your running videos. I'm making this video because I make a lot of videos about running, trying to film marathons and other races. And it can be very hard when you're going back to the filming to know exactly what point you're at. And I thought it would be useful to bake in the data that DJI Osmo Action 5 allows you to do this. But it's good for lots of other reasons. You can film your running gait. You can film yourself when you're actually running when it's impossible or ne nearly impossible to take notes when you're running. You do it with a voice recorder, obviously, as I'm kind of doing here. But yeah, you can also use it, put the camera statically, and you can use it to see what your running form is at various gates from different angles. And yeah, that's why I'm making this video. And as always, this video might be long. The chapter mark is down below. Skip on through to the bits you might be interested in. <laughs> Let's get going. In terms of the equipment, I've got a DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro connected to a DJI charging handle, which makes it easier to hold it. It's in rock steady. It's in 30 frames per second. I think it's a 4-3 aspect ratio. I'm also now recording with the DJI Mic 2, which is connected by Bluetooth into the camera. I finished all the running and the filming in the Irish Town Stadium here in Dublin. I'm now walking home to analyze the data and look at the footage. Hope it comes out. The rest of this video will really be in two very different parts. One, why you might want to synchronize some data from your watch and your video, what effects you might get. And secondly, how to do it, how to synchronize the watch and the data from the video. To go through some of the why first, I collect a lot of data using my Stride foot pods connected to my Apple Watch, and then I analyze it on my Mac. Likewise, I do the same with my Garmin F4955, and I connect that again through the Garmin Connect app and do the same sort of analysis. I make videos where I perhaps might be running a marathon and I'm filming it, and it'd be very handy to know at what point in the race in particular uh, scene was taken. That's something that I'd like to do. And the DJI Mimo app allows me to do that. And it's not just activities and metrics for running. DJI have lists, and I'll pop them up here, but some of the activities, cycling, diving, skiing, parachuting, there's just some of them. And then there are a lot of different metrics, there's speed, pace, G-force, elevation, and you can kind of mix and match them. You don't always have to just do the running ones. I'd like there to be a few more like cadence and various things, but you can do and get a lot of data. And also there's a DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro watermark that thankfully is optional. And some of the examples you'll see it and some you won't. Most of my early footage was done on a soaking track and got absolutely soaked, but I went back and did another couple of times tweaking various things and uh, yeah so you might see some sunny footage and some very wet footage just to show you some examples one is me walking around the block at night time you can see a map you can see the elevation gradient pace and heart rate and those are typicals i've also included the watermark in those those are typical of the running data there's a, a timestamp, more more further in the video on that and then i took to the track where i exported the video without the watermark without the elevation or grading don't really need them just the pace and the heart rate and the map of the track it's a circular or an oval running track was very very useful because as you can see in parts when i'm running around various corners you can see that matched to the little map you don't always need to run with the camera you don't really need to run with it at all i left the camera in situ in part and then ran by and i could see the data on the screen different speeds etc when i'm running the next run i want to use it i want to be running up hills and then i'll have the elevation data and i'll have the gradients that's very interesting for me and so so far so good and so useful Ah, that sinking feeling. DJI make it look so easy. It should be. It isn't, but it can be done. And I'm going to show you how I've done it. You might have a better solution, but this solution works for me at the moment. To define the problem a little bit, you should be able to import the footage to the DJI Mimo app and sync your footage from your Garmin watch. It should be simple. All the linking and syncing should be almost automatic, but it's not. I'm making this video on 10th of December 2024 and 
DJI have said recently there was a firmware update that said it would it would cure this. It didn't. Perhaps you have a different workaround, but I'm going to show you one that works for me. I found different things on the internet that sort of talked about the problem, but not really defined the solution. Took me a quite a, some time of figuring out, but hopefully this will be helpful to you. I think the problem might lie in the fact of what is UTC plus one or daylight saving time where clocks go forward or back from regular time. There is no daylight saving time in China where DJI are based and perhaps that's something to do with it. But yeah, at the moment in uh, winter here in Ireland, you need to use a workaround. As well as the DJI Action 5 Pro, I use a MacBook computer. I use my iPhone and Garmin FR955. They're the basic devices I used for this. But the process should work with other devices, a PC, Android, etc. Natively, the DJI Mimo app supports Apple Health and also Garmin and some other apps. And it also says some authorized data from or unauthorized from course and Sunto. I haven't tested any of those. Now, also, I use the metric system, but it should work in Imperial as well, but the examples will all be in meters, etc. Now, it's important. I'm not using the DJI Osmo Action GPS Bluetooth remote control. It was very unclear from DJI whether you needed to, but I didn't in any of these. I also incidentally tried with the Osmo Action 2, and I couldn't make that work. But with the Osmo Action 5 Pro, it works as advertised with a lot of working around. I'm not going to go through all the reasons that it won't work or any of the correspondence between DJI and various people I looked at on the internet. I'm just going to show you a way that works for me. I'll go through all the steps one by one, but before you start, update the camera to the latest firmware and also the Mimo app. It's also helpful to update your Garmin to the latest software or whatever ones you're using have the latest firmware and make a backup file of your video file so that you have a clean set without any of this data. First thing you do is to start the DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro, start that recording. And then the next step is to start your Garmin recording your data for whatever event you're trying to synchronize. Run the event, stop the Garmin, stop the camera. That way the camera footage will overlap the Garmin or other data recorder. And I opened up the Garmin Connect on my computer, on my laptop, and I exported a .fit file from the activity. Then I transferred the .fit file to my iPhone. I did that via AirDrop. Again, all that's very straightforward to do. And there'll be screenshots either side showing a few bits and pieces. And then opened the DJI Mimo app on my iPhone. And then I turned on and connected to DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro. These are all the quick bits. Then you download the video file. You have to download it from the camera into the app. And then you select the dashboard, which is a button down at the bottom. Then you go to select the fit file to import. Now you get a lot of error messages. You'll see some of them pop up here, but I just ignored all the error messages. Selected the fit file. Then you pick the various metrics that you want. So I don't necessarily all have to relate to running. So you could have miles per hour, kilometers per hour as well. And you can do those. But the uh, then you have to select the time alignment. This is the most important thing. The time seems to be out by an hour and without going through all the different uh, ins and outs of it all. You have to essentially synchronize the time. Now, this is, this is tricky. Uh, this is the hardest step in the process. You have to hit the five second button in the minus five seconds until you've got an hour back in time. And that is 3,600,000 milliseconds. And you'll be tapping for quite a while. It's not that, it's not, it doesn't take that long, a couple of minutes and you have it done. But you basically got to go back and shift an hour. Now then they're pretty much in sync and you can make small increments up and down. It's helpful if you're starting from zero, from a stationary start, or from a fixed point on a track so you know how to do it. But effectively, you can, you're shifting the footage slightly to get it back into sync. But the big thing is you've got to go back in time for an hour. Now, it might vary depending on what country you're in, but that certainly where I am in Ireland, which is what I have to do. Once you've got that done, you can hit the tick mark. Now, 
you can do this with by and, and turn on and off the metrics you want. Once you've got that done, you can export the file to photos. I export the file to my photos on my iPhone, and then I send it across to my computer for embedding in this particular video. It sounds an awful faff, and it took an awful long time to figure out how to do it. But once I, once you've got a workflow done, it, it's it's not it's not that bad. And if you're wanting to film, say, a marathon and you want to have this, it's well worth it. Take you 20 minutes to sort out. You can make all sorts of other adjustments in the app. I haven't. I film in log footage, so um, I color grade in Premiere Pro afterwards. You can color grade inside in the app. So if you look at some of my footage, it might look a bit uh, gray if I'm looking at screenshots and it'll look fine in the overall video. And then I export in 4K resolution, which is the highest setting, but you might record or export in lower. So that's what I typically do. And then I saved in my photo app for me to do whatever I like with it. You can do it multiple times and get different metrics. And then, yeah, job done. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff in the description below. I'll not happily answer any questions. Put it in the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there. That's my videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.